me just take a minute and walk you around the Forest River Hemisphere Light purchased from Jeff Couch RV in Ohio. Approximately $27,000. I'd call it a 38 foot, about 9,000 pound unit. Camped in it twice, not real happy. Hopefully this video helps some people that are looking at the hemisphere really think twice about a Forest River product. I have an old Dutchman I won't get rid of because I feel it's superior to this. Not so much in looks, but more so in quality. Just going around, it's a, it's a nice unit, looks good on the outside, but we all know looks can be deceiving. These power jacks are probably the worst things I've ever seen in my life. The awning is extremely small and extremely thin. When the camper was delivered, the floor was completely wet inside. Every corner of the slide out you can see daylight through. So I don't dare tow it anywhere if it's going to rain. The very first thing you see under your slide out right here is plywood. Right against the wheels is the first thing. Don't know who came up with that bright idea. I guess that's going to get the old Hoover can in a dam, Hoover dam in a can treatment. Refrigerator was very warm. Took this cover off above, realized there's a white piece of shiny plywood in there covering off three quarters of the thing. I drilled three holes in it. So between that and moving the thermistor, that really seemed to help the refrigerator problem. It dropped at about eight more degrees. It could finally breathe. I'm tearing apart the uh, outside kitchen. And here's why. Crawled underneath to look where the plumbing and things go. The bottom of this sink is wide open to the outside. So this is road dirt from delivery, like I said, when my floor was soaking wet. So all this is exposed to outside bugs, critters, water, whatever you can throw at it. Here's the top, metal top, pretty nice. Typical camper stuff out back. I replaced their grill with one I got from Sam's Club. Hookups are pretty handy. You can see their black under wrap is already sagging. I'm going to have to get some more washers and bolts and tighten that up because we'll have critters in there, I'm sure, before long. One other thing that's interesting to me is this flooring. Two pieces of lawn wedged between foam. Loose laid linoleum throughout the whole unit, so I guess if you ever have to cut the flooring out, that would be alright as far as the linoleum goes. I don't know how you would ever fix that flooring if you had a problem. I've replaced plywood in my old unit, and it's the conventional 2x4, 2x6, 16 on center, just plywood. I'll take you inside and show you a few things. Don't like this door discovered that the uh, competitor's brand has a combined screen door built in with their door. Would have been a much nicer feature. My refrigerator has a dent across it. AC unit really seems to be underpowered on super hot days. Water just drips out of this unit. We're having some uh, lower humidity days here in central PA, so we're not seeing a lot of that today. All this trim had buckles I had to cut off and put my own nails in. Had to uh, have to get some stuff to touch up. Trim back here as well. Had to have some nails put in it. Replaced their wallpaper stuff with ceramic type tile from Lowe's. Turned out really good. The wife's happy with that. Overall kitchen and stuff I can't really complain about. The one thing I don't understand no light switch when you come in the door whatsoever. You have to walk the whole way over here in the dark and feel every one of these to figure out which one is either the lights or the outside awning light. Makes no sense. In the bathroom, a few things I had to do. One thing I'll guarantee, I don't care where you buy your RV, this black piece around the bottom of the tub will likely never be caulked. Had to Put some wedges under it so I could get caulking in it and caulk it shut. Had to take their rusting drywall screws out of the shower and put 
stainless steel screws in. Brand new unit. 15. It, it really disgusts you. It's supposed to be uh, new and improved. You do get a light switch in the bathroom. Bedroom's pretty roomy. You get a light switch in here as well. You can almost forget a TV in here. I don't know if you put a 12, 14 inch TV up here. I'm a cabinet maker by trade. I think I'm going to make some kind of a TV that I can turn on its side and put in this closet and pull it out when I want to use it and turn it back on its side and put it away when not in use. I don't understand these windows. Cheapest thing I've ever seen. They're all these fire escape windows with this crazy goofy pop out thing. Walk by in the middle of the night and the window slams, wakes everybody up and scares them or you get stabbed in the back with it. Awesome forced river feature. All the windows are very similar in that, just a simple pull over and slide type window. New style thermostat. A little confusing at first. This is the kids' room. They get the couch, two bunks, another save a nickel. We only put one catch in this bunk bed holder. Boy, it sure would have been nice to have two. You get kids in here jumping around it, full around and whatever, and they're going to have it pulled down. You can see the trims coming off the bottom of my bunk bed there. I have to work on that. Here's another funny feature. I have this nice huge window in the back of the unit and that wee little 6x6 six six hole over there is the only thing that opens with the screen. I mean really, come on, let's get real. Your hot water heater and furnace are under this cabinet. So your access, I guess, I took this cover off that you see here you could gain access. Now I see if you pull the two drawers out and take them off their glides and pull them out, you do get a little bit of access, but not premium. The same hole that's in the outside by that outside kitchen sink is also in the floor underneath the furnace. That's how I noticed the stuff was coming down in the back because when I took this all apart and looked in here, I could see daylight. There is no other insulation in the floor of this unit other than that foam. On a very hot day, I can touch my hand on the inside wall of the camper, and it's 80 plus degrees if the sun's shining on it. Again, no light switch in the kids' room. They got to jump up and turn these on. Makes a whole lot of sense. A couple light switches would have made a world of difference in this unit. I'm about 50% happy with this unit. My wife likes it. She thinks it's the greatest thing. Looks wise, it is, but I got to tell you. Look long and hard at these units before you decide to buy one. For the same money, there's a lot more quality out there than what you get in one of these. Hope this helps somebody make a decision because I'll tell you what, if I could reverse my decision, I'd do it in a heartbeat. So, good luck with your Forest River Hemisphere 300BH. At least when I go camping, I have something.